That's for, oh man, that's, I forgot, that's why I wasn't going so fast. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought I was actually done. Oh, oh. Guys say you want to see the dirt flying. <laughs> well, that's the price you got to pay, right? This is not a big ag farming channel, all right? Look at that. It just keeps doing it. Huh. That's interesting. Well, what is, I, honestly, I don't know for sure what it's really doing. I'll get over that there, try to keep them leveled out a bit. Hey, welcome back folks. Today we are gonna do a little bit more disking. In fact, this morning while we're shooting the video is when our previous disking video came out and folks had a lot to say about what we were doing wrong. Now, as always, the internet knows best, right? Somebody always knows the answer. There's a lot of different answers out there though, right? What somebody says is right, somebody else says is wrong and vice versa. No matter what anybody does, somebody's gotta tell you you're doing it wrong. And to be fair, I never said I was an expert disker all right but we played around with it we did all sorts of different settings right we did the most aggressive angle the almost least aggressive angle not thinking it would do much we tried all sorts of settings with the hydraulic top link we tried different speeds there's a couple things we couldn't really control the primary one being the weight of the disc itself and as you may be able to see there's not exactly a built-in weight tray or any ready-made way to add additional weight to this disc to make it go down and sink in and, and do its thing a little bit better. And that has long been one of my issues with discs for smaller tractors. And this is really as big of a tractor as we go to. This is not a big ag farming channel, all right? We cater to hobby farmers, small acreage farmers, people just putting in some food plots here and there, uh, gardens, that kind of thing. So this isn't for you guys with your 250, 300 horsepower uh, big ag tractors out there tilling up hundreds or thousands of acres of fields. That's a totally different ball game. For our application here, we're looking to get just one tool, if you can, to get your garden prep or your food plot prep just ready to go so you can plant in the ground. Now, if you're always tilling at the same depth, say four or five inches down year after year, you could wind up with a hard pan underneath there that you need to break up on occasion. But for most folks, we just want one tool. Now, the other thing that you guys like to really point out was that it was too wet, all right? And so basically the weather here went from completely saturated to bone dry, just like that. And so this ground gets hard when it turns dry. And I think I would have rather had it wet than like what we're gonna deal with today. I've tilled this ground when it's bone dry and it's, it's jarring. But we're gonna put some of those tips to practice that we read through because we take them to heart. All right, so we're gonna keep it the most aggressive angle. I'm gonna shorten this top link as much as possible so that we're maybe only using the front row of discs and put all that weight on just one row and see if that does a better job. And maybe we can come back afterwards and do a, a better row. We're gonna try going even faster and faster. My problem with going faster the first time around was that the disc came up out of the ground and wanted to ride on top again because we don't have enough weight. And if the tool doesn't have a built-in mechanism to add weight, then it's not really designed to use more weight. It's designed to work as it is, right? And so again, for our purposes, we're doing pretty small acreage. And in fact, we're gonna do a couple strips. And so it's not enough to come at it from a different angle. And that's what we did previously as well. And it's one of the reasons, again, I like a tiller because we've used it for so many different applications, right? Whether it's a, a screening plot, prepping for driveway uh, installation, putting in a big food plot, even your lawn preparation if you want to revamp it that way too. They're very versatile attachments. Oh, and the last thing I want to address is that there are certain times of year that are best to use an attachment, all right? And in a perfect world, go for it. But sometimes you just need to get a project done. Sometimes we're just out here having fun demoing because we have all this land to play around with. So don't take it too seriously, but know that there's oftentimes an ideal circumstance and you know what? Sometimes you just got to get the job done even in less than ideal conditions. And I think an expensive tractor tool should be able to get that job done for you. 
So let's give this disc another shot. You can let me know what else I'm doing wrong because no matter what it is, you guys find a way, let's get to it. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Okay, let's see what our speed is right now. So we have this top link fully retracted to put all that pressure on the front row and it is not engaging the middle hardly at all. So let's adjust a little bit more. That's the nice thing about these hydraulic top links. So I'm adjusting it to keep the rear row off the ground. Kind of a sweet spot there. So that was two and a half miles an hour. We got the top link set good. Okay, so now we're going about four and a half miles an hour. Cruising right along, right is <laughs> noticeably bumpier. Honestly, it looks worse to me. You can see a lot of till dirt back there before. Now I just see a bunch of roughed up grass. Woo! I'm gonna, on the way back, lower it to third. I couldn't ride like this for too long anyway. This was a this is a rough ride. Okay, so, and again, this is a un, unworked ground for at least a good 10 years. Okay, so we're in third now. Low range, third gear. Oops, sorry. Oh, stopped us dead in our tracks there. Well, what we hit? Okay, I'm gonna go up to fourth right now. See what that puts us at. So that's 3.4. You must gain a mile per hour with uh, with each each gear. Playing with that top link a little bit more. Going to make it more aggressive. Going back to the really aggressive. You get to that certain point though, you can see the middle doesn't do much. Lowering it back down. Man, I love this hydraulic top link. It's barely engaged the rear row. Not ideal. Let me go back down to uh, third there. Let me go all the way down. We're gonna level it out. But you can really feel that strain. Whew. Oh, I'm in two wheel drive. Sorry, guys. Now we're in four. I forgot I popped it into two wheel earlier. We had that hydraulic wine issue that we talked about previously. I was trying to see if popping it in and out of two and four wheel drive would help with that like some other guys were experiencing. Not thoroughly impressed, if I'm going to be honest. Way worse than it was doing it when it was wet and when we were going slower and when we had it pretty much as level as we could get it. So I'm going to go back down the way I just came you know, just try to hit it a different way. Let's try something completely different here. What if I, what if I do just the, the back one? If I put all the weight on the back row, see what happens uh, with that. We go down to two. Nah, I don't like that. Well, actually, that's not too bad. It's a little bit better. Not great. Okay, so this is. 2.08 miles per hour right now. You can feel that engine working. The front row is barely engaged. The rear row is doing the bulk of the work. It's chopping it up. The soil looks better than I remember. And I know I'm going to get comments about our soil and how you guys all have gigantic rocks. Okay, so I'm going to go faster now. Keep mixing it up. So Let's, let's jump into fourth. See what happens here, huh? Let's jump into fifth. Go faster yet. So, let's see. It's, yeah, you can feel <laughs> It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't like that a whole lot. It's not going any faster. You can hear that engine working. <laughs> and it gets bumpy. Fifth gear, it's four and a half right now. Fifth gear might 
might not be for me. That's a that's a rough one, guys. Maybe after it's worked up, you come through a worked up field, maybe that'd be better. Okay, so that's two passes that you're looking at right next to me here. Um, okay, so let's try this one. Uh, they're pretty aggressive top link angle there. We're in uh, third, I think. Get her going here. So two and a half MPH right now. How's our how's that looking? Let's go uh, in the fourth. It reaches a point when it's just too much. So we got that back row barely down. Just barely. It's just skimming the top. And basically all that weight's on the front. On the front row. That's not doing so hot. Man, it's a rough ride. Let's uh let's go the other way there, huh? Do that back row. That kind of worked okay, you see. Woo! Boy, that's that's definitely working better. You can see the difference there. Yeah. Between front down and back down. We're in uh, fourth range, we're doing 3.4, and it's pretty much about max. Um, you can hear that engine straining. Definitely works better though with the back row down than the front row. I think we're gonna do another pass up and down with everything flat, uh, the front and the back both engaging. Next to it, and uh, you know, just so we can see what it looks like. Alrighty, folks, let's do one more next to it here. We're gonna level it out now and uh, down and back, and then we're gonna come back over what we did already. You can see there's different areas in the, in the sections we just did when I was messing around with you know, maxing out that top link, shortening the top link, different speeds. You can definitely see areas of side where it just basically didn't touch the middle at all or didn't engage well. So far, it seems like with the pressure on the back row, it works a lot better. Um, but again, this is drier soil materials. We'll get our speed up for your guys' suggestion and see how it works with it being pretty well leveled. Here we go. So we're doing, I think that was two and a half. I'm gonna go faster yet. So this is uh, 3.4, we're in fourth. Just for, just for the fun of it, just for the fun of it, I'm going to six. So that's the highest speed. Woo, that's for, oh man, that's, I forgot. That's why I wasn't going so fast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I thought it was actually done. Oh, oh. Guys say you want to see the dirt flying. Oh. Well, that's the price you got to pay, right? Well, max speed, honestly, I didn't even see where it was going. Uh, just trying to, I'm glad I had my seatbelt on. Max speed, though, did not work that well. So let's uh, slow her down just a bit. Slow her down just a bit. Go back to fourth. We're uh, pretty level. Jeez. This transmission is supposed to smoothly engage. I find it to be a little rough. So we're going 3.4 right now. Just not great. This should get us up over 4, 4.4 at the moment. So level is definitely just not, not the ticket. I think level is not the ticket because the disc doesn't weigh enough uh, for two rows. If it's just one row, all that weight on one row of discs, you can see what it does. It does a lot better. You know, and I guess maybe you do enough passes, you crisscross it, right? Again, we're not crisscrossing. We don't. I don't have time for that today. We will do that. We're gonna put it in a few big plots out here. And so we'll do that. We'll show you that in the future too. But let's go forth, let her rip. So 
So we're doing 3.4 and fourth right now. I don't know if I can get the. We'll try getting the fifth. Give her a shot. Hold on to your horses. Okay. All right. So after uh, another down, starting to come together. This probably not exactly like cross hatching, hatching or uh, crisscrossing, but um, it's doing decent. Okay, struggling, struggling to keep at the max speed in fifth. Who knows? Or somebody will say we're going too fast. They're sort of flying. Rough ride. Rocking bucks around here. Eh. I guess the results are okay. I thought they're going to be pretty darn good. Whew. So this will be our fourth pass on this section. Okay, fourth pass. Keep that in mind when you're doing your work. And keep that speed up. Mind your your operator comfort too. Although you got the cab. Oh, something happened. On a root ball, maybe? No, it's, it's, it's catching something. I don't know. I'm gonna get back to aggressiveness there. Quite tell what it's doing. Gee, look at that. Bound it up again, huh? So we're going to go slower because that doesn't seem to really be doing, doing us any favors. Look at that. It just keeps doing it. That's interesting. Well, what is? I honestly I don't know for sure what it's really doing. I'll get over that there. Try to keep them leveled out a bit. Slightly more pressure on the back one. I tell you, the tiller heat is dropping down and go. Maybe not for you. Big Ag Farmers. You hear me saying that over and over again? That's not what this channel is about. For me, this is not the tool. But to each their own, it wasn't until our last pass where I was really clogging up and jamming up. So we're going to try just like this. Do fourth. Better keep my tongue in my mouth. Hit one of these bumps and bite it right off. Ah, let's try that fifth. Come on, buddy. See, I think it starts out doing good when you're going faster, but then at some point it wants to ride up. Because this looked just like it did on the first row. Then you can see up here. Start to see a lot more grass. Maybe we can get lucky and it will stay down. Start to bogger down a little bit. You can hear that engine is training. Okay, one more pass back. Let's see how she does. And fifth. Woo. Okay, here we go. Wonderful. Look at that. Already loaded it up. Let's do a fourth again. Look at that thing. It's 
piling up. I'll tell you. Let's try it all the way forward. Maybe that'll do something different, huh? Who knows? Oh, that's nice. Got the bumblebee out there. That's why I love a cab tractor in the warm weather, you know? I mean, parts of this look good after four passes. Not as good as the tiller in one pass. <laughs> but, you know. Well, there you have it, folks. Next up, checking out the tiller. Compare those results. Alrighty, folks. Well, there you have it. 82 degrees out. Nice to be in that cab. Inconsistent results. I tried all sorts of stuff again. There definitely was still some moisture down there, but um, you know, a decent amount drier than it was previously. And again, I don't really think that factored into it a whole lot because there's certain sections that look pretty decent after four passes, and there's other sections that look like this like they almost haven't been touched and i think a lot of that's just weight on these discs too um they just don't have enough of it so but there's no built-in weight tray right you'd have to fab something up and that doesn't make sense to do that on a tool that's should be ready to go right if it needs the extra weight put the weight tray on there so you can put sandbags or uh suitcase weights or jugs of water whatever the heck you want to put on there to get the additional weight now, utilizing all that weight on one row, you know, you, you saw us. We played around with this thing, all sorts of settings, adjusting it out to just have contact on the back row, just the front row. Um, but getting two rows of weight on one row, because that's the only one making contact with the ground, worked a lot better. Uh, the rear row actually was better than just the front row, if that makes sense. Going too fast had its disadvantages, very rocky ride. Uh, by the fourth pass, it really wanted to clog up and just kind of drag the dirt instead of flowing over it and chopping. So, you know, again, I'm not sold. I'm not a farmer. I don't pretend to be, but I've put in, I don't know, pro I probably tilled hundreds of food plots and gardens over the years. I used to do that a lot. I've just used a tiller and I get way better results than this. Nobody ever complains. They have me back year after year to redo it again whatever their plant grows. I, you know, I don't get it. This isn't rocket science. If you need a deep tillage tool here and there because you get a hard pan level underneath, get a subsoiler or a, a, you know, a deep plow to run every five years or something like that. But there's no need to subsoil, plow, disc, till, wait till it dries out, till again, whatever, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't need to be that complicated. And maybe it's different for you guys making a living doing uh, the big egg farming, but not for us small guys doing hobby farming food plots, gardens. So that's gonna wrap it up today. If you are in the market, maybe for a tiller, we've got a few discs as well if you want them. You can check us out at goodworkstractors.com. We do sell and ship all over the country. You can buy right on our website. We'll pack it up and ship it out to you. We'd love to earn your business. Feel free to drop us an email if you have any questions. And if you did enjoy today's video, you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button down below. We're gonna have more tilling videos coming up, planting, doing all sorts of stuff out here as well. But I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.